Please. Thank you, sir. You had anthropology as your optional. Yes, sir. Today there was this news that uh, a resort was approved in Andaman and then it was put on hold. I so, did not read that news. Sir. Have you you've not read today's newspaper? No, sir. Not okay, yet. Right. Uh, okay, there was another controversy regarding a Sentinelese tribe. Sir. Right? They had attacked and killed an American Christian missionary. Yes, sir. Yeah, so what do you think should be our approach to tribal development, particularly those in the island regions? Yes, sir. So that incident that took place, uh, he uh, that missionary, he illegally entered that place because it is a prohibited area and it was illegal for him to do that. And since this tribe lives in isolation, so any undue contact with uh, the other population brings them a lot of trouble, including health issues and other problems. So in order, because they had to think about their own security, so they took that step. And I do not think that they are wrong or something. Now talking about the tribal development, I think we have to be gradual about uh, how we uh, assimilate these tribes. Assimilation is not an option. Integration, we have to go slowly about it. If there is some problem with some tribes, then we have to give them health care facilities or bring, I mean to say is that we have to contact, we have to generate contact with them in a gradual manner, slowly and according to their demand. We should never enforce upon them anything. How slow should it be? Because it's been like 70 years since independence, right? And Sentinelese specifically, if you talk about them, Sir. so they are, they are like practically cut off. So should we maintain and perpetuate their isolation or there should, needs to be a change of approach also? Sir, I think they are very happy being isolated. They do not want our, they do not need us if we see their lifestyle. They are happy with what they have, I think, sir. So we should not think that they are living miserably there, sir. That is the first misconception that we have, that their life is miserable. We should not think like that. They have a unique way of life and they are happy in that. Okay. You're a football player and a volleyball player, sir. right? So. How important is uh, you know team approach to in administration? Please. So team approach is very essential. Uh, as a district administrator, you have to work with a lot of people under you and also over you. So uh, the main thing about a team leader is, sir, that he tries to bring consensus among all and um, and bring cohesiveness among working. So that is very essential for any district administrator. Another thing is, sir, it also brings better efficiency. If, if a team works in a cohesive manner, then it brings efficiency to the organization. That is another thing, sir. And also it improves work culture and it motivates people to be committed to the organization. Okay, what's the difference between an administrator and a leader? Sir, so there are overlapping features between administrator and a leader. A few differences that I can... Uh, uh, point out it's uh, I think there is no answers differences sir administrator has to be a leader uh, has should have a leadership qualities and uh, what are the important leadership qualities you think an administrator should have sir sir important leadership qualities first is sir which is very important is integrity sir which uh, a leader should possess integrity and honesty second sir he should lead by example and he should take everyone along he should never think. Another is sir, he should never think about the self-interest. He should always worry about the collective interest of the group that he is leading. Another sir, he, is, or he should always be ready for criticism and he should always accept with humility if there is any flaws in his methods. So these are a few, there are many others. Are these uh, broadly theoretical, right? Like you think of collective interest and not self-interest. Is that really possible? So why are you joining the civil services? Is it to, isn't it? Is it not to serve your own interest? That's perfectly legitimate if it is because of that. Please. Sir, this is the ideal that we should all aspire to move towards. It may not be practically possible for every leader to do so, but we do aspire that leaders should be like this. This is the ideal leader that we want to have. All right. Sir. So, have you been to any national park or wildlife sanctuary? Uh, no sir. Sanjay Gandhi National Park? No sir, I did not. Where is IIT Pawai based out? Sir, 
सर इट इज एडजस्टेड टू संजय गांधी नेशनल पार्क कंटीजियस एरिया विहार लेक एंड पवई लेक यू हैव बीन देयर नो सर आई कुड आर यू अवेयर अबाउट प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर यस सर कैन यू टेल मी द प्रेजेंट स्टेटस ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर the man animal conflict that you are talking about so we need to uh, rectify that by b- building corridors in the tiger contiguous area so that they can have free movement also uh, man animal conflict can be reduced by uh, uh, by sir trying to uh, the community awareness can be brought and a proper tackling of if there is any uh, the encroachment should not take place basically sir in the tiger areas which are heavily populated so these are the few problems that we are facing and we can rectify it i think sir the project has been really successful and we are the like we have the highest population of tiger in the world right. is it we have the highest population yes of tiger yes okay and what is your thought on climate change and india's response sir uh, india has been very serious about climate change and we have taken proactive steps one is uh, that paris climate agreement that we uh, signed very spontaneously like we did not take much time then we also uh, started international solar alliance which was also in the right direction for uh, climate change and we have uh, also in our own policy sir in the domestic policy we have national action plan for climate change which has several missions that aims to uh, the Uh, undo the ills of climate change, the uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, we have also put coal cess, for example, uh, so that we can and focus on renewable renewable energy is one of the most uh, ambitious target that we have taken to reduce climate change. So you spoke about uh, renewable energy. See, what is the major source we derive renewable energy from? so currently the wind is the most uh, currently the capacity of wind is the most in our country that we are generating electricity but we are we have ambitious target to uh, make uh, use of solar energy profitably properly so so solar energy will be in the future the main source but currently the wind energy is the most uh, source that we have installed capacity that we have also we have biofuel energy in the future that will be used can you highlight some major issues in this energy sector of renewable energy only sir and what are your out, uh, thoughts on coming out of it sir in the renewable energy sector one is the viability of the companies that are coming sir financial issues i think the tariff has been falling uh, rapidly and which is making companies unviable uh, unviable economically so that is one of the issue with the uh, this sector another is sir uh, the competition with the other sector coal and uh, thermal based power plant also demand of electricity in our country is huge but uh, the con- oh, per capita con- consumption if we compare to other countries bigger countries it is very less so we need to increase that to make this viable another sir is grid connectivity that is lacking for the solar energy uh, renewable energy sector so we need to have a proper grid management and grid connectivity for this sector also sir stand alone uh, solar plants and uh, st- uh, solar plants can be uh, thought about it sir and that would be a great idea thank you sir uh, you are aware that the kerosene and lpg sir which is marketed is subsidized are you, are you aware it is subsidized yes sir Uh, there are different forms of subsidization yes sir one is universal subsidization uh, where everybody is subsidized like electricity you find different slabs and when you get a bill uh, whoever may get that bill uh, he is sort of for different different slabs sir he is uh, 
given different rates, twice for our consumption higher rate. Uh, you agree with this kind of a subsidy or you consider some other form of subsidy which is uh, more appropriate? This, this one is the universal subsidy because everybody needs subsidy like electricity and so on. So in case of electricity, if there is a proper slab, slab based subsidy in which it is based on the consumption, then I think it is in a way a good move because poor people consume less so they get more subsidy and rich people consume more so they get less subsidy. So this subsidy giving a method is fine but there can be a misuse of this subsidy people can consume more electricity and waste it. So that is one of the issues that we can face. Sir. So uh, we can try direct benefit transfer which will lead to less wastage. I think that is the only solution that I see sir, direct benefit transfer. In case of kerosene sir, I think we have to move for the direct benefit transfer. It is in the uh, benefit of the consumer as well as the sir, government. Um. But kerosene, considering that there is an electrification of the, let's say, rural areas, apart from the urban areas, and also uh, the people who are using kerosene earlier, even for cooking in the urban, I mean rural, not rural, not rural, but the urban area, or very urban areas. Now that is uh, dying out. So in that sense, what do you see the future of kerosene? Sir, kerosene as an oil has definitely very less uses. It is in uses in rural areas for stoves that runs on kerosene. But it is slowly, as you said, dying out because LPG subsidy is being given and gas connection is being rolled out rapidly. I think future of kerosene is not in the uh, particularly this sector especially sir i think uh, the cooking sector will be eliminated slowly and uh, kerosene is used in another fuel for example it is used in aviation fuel also sir to some extent so i think it can have that application but the application for subsidy uh, uh, that, that's not exactly kerosene but it is a uh, okay that's all right and the uh, in case of LPG, Sir. how do you see, just like kerosene you are seeing, how do you see the future of LPG in India? Both for, uh, my question is, there are two parts of it. In, and I am looking at it from this, let's say, government policy area. Sir. For mm -hmm. urban areas and rural areas. Sir, for uh, urban, what, what is the future you see and for rural and why? Sir. sir, urban areas mostly the gas connection has been almost universal. Very few percentage I, I think would be left out of the gas connection. Mostly the people have gas connection. And But in the future it may move to some electrical induction for example we are seeing in the future. So in the urban area, the uh, graph is going to be a little increase in the consumption of the LPG and then there may be a fall in the consumption. In rural areas, still sir, uh, millions of people do not have gas connection. I think that there, will, there will be huge demand and, uh, and we need to uh, increase the consumption to some extent. And for example, in the Urja Ganga project that government is uh, bringing, uh, to the eastern uh, of part of the country, UP and Bihar, because uh, in those areas, sir, people are mostly using uh, wood fuel or other kerosene, for example. So I think it okay. will be a okay. in future it will be. A Can you briefly highlight a few human development factors factors of a home state? So the most uh, pro, uh, poor indicator in uh, in social sector is our education, which is the lowest in our uh, in the country, sir. And especially women's education, which is very poor, I would say. So second is sir, child labour is rampant in Bihar. It is rampant in all over India, sir. But in Bihar particularly, I have personally seen that child labour exists to a great extent, and that is very uh, sad. 
also sir because the caste inequalities and caste based politics is very much entrenched in bihar and that has harmed us politically and also development of the state these are the three big problems that exist because basically there are no positive factors positive factors of human development in your state sir it is improving sir everything is improving sir but these are the problems that i see sir everything is slowly moving ahead what is your opinion regarding the term bimaru states sir bimaru has was an acronym that was got for bihar rajasthan mp but the name itself is derogatory to some extent i think yes. some other word can be used instead of bimaru okay you seem to have uh, computer btech and mtech both at the same time in 2013 why so sir it is a dual degree course five years mtech and btech which the, the iit offers okay and you did it in aerospace engineering sir so how will that be relevant in the civil services sir sir aerospace engineering per se uh, i do not see much application uh, except that it can be used for example drone can be used for various purposes it can it, are, it is being used in agriculture insurance or other but these are uh, some general uses satellite is being also used but aerospace sector the knowledge that i have gained from iit as a community uh, iit community it will help me sir in uh, giving various uh, uh, in doing my duty as an administrator for example sir in iit i have uh, interacted with such a wide talent pool of people and from diverse backgrounds from various states that i have able to become more culturally tolerant and my prejudices which earlier was there it has gone so sir i think i have become more But my personality has is developed. My interpersonal skills has become better. So I think this things will help. Okay, one last question. Can you briefly explain your journey uh, after you completed your MTech in 2013? Sir, sir, uh, post 2013, uh, post my uh, col- uh, college uh, got over. I was looking for a job uh, in any sector in a cad, uh, mostly in the engineering sector, but. the opportunities were less at that time so i had to i have joined this startup e-commerce startup as head of operations which i worked for 7 8 months then after that i switched to citizens for accountable government which was about election campaign management which i did in 2014 election after that sir in uh, by the end of 2014 i decided to pursue civil services since last past past 5 years you have been trying to uh, get into the services yes sir what is the contribution of elon musk to uh, aerospace sir sir elon musk is a entrepreneur and he has put a very ambitious uh, path to aerospace sector first is sir one contribution that i see is he is trying to make the space tourism possible by sending people into space tourism and one uh, he has also got one customer from japan another is sir he is uh, uh, trying for uh, space x vehicle which is reusable sorry launch vehicle with, in which the rocket will after launching the rocket will be brought back to the earth which will reduce the cost of overall launch third is sir he is also involved in the hyperloop system which will be uh, connecting the cities with a very high speed uh, connectivity which will lead to the uh, decongestion of cities and also faster movement which will bring efficiency Good. Some Westerners they criticize India's space program, saying that it are doing it for prestige. That money you can use it for development in Bihar, you know, healthcare and education. So, what would be your answer, uh, sir? I will condemn their uh, point of view, sir. And I think India is very successful in what they are doing, in the particularly in the space sector. And we should be proud of what we are doing. Well, proud you are. but in terms of priorities for india so uh, does uh, it contribute to india's overall development uh, i mean the immediate uh, needs of development yes sir. in fact it uh, helps us immediately also hmm. and also it has a long term beneficiary in immediate term sir communication satellite that we send or help us in telecommunication there are also defense satellite that helps in uh, defense sector 
and also we have for example Gagan which helps in our aviation uh, safety and we have also launch satellite which uh, better GPS for example IRNSS which will replace the GPS system that we are using and also for agriculture uh, resource mapping is done sir which is essential yeah. for mining. So what is your opinion on what people call it the Islamic fundamentalism? So Islamic fundamentalism is being used uh, as a tool by the vested interested people to further their own agenda and they are using religion for itself. And uh, they are basically using the fear of the people. Uh, their fear is being used uh, to create terror in the society. Now, uh, you think uh, the system of madrasas uh, do they contribute to this Islamic fundamentalism? Sir, I do not think that this this can be uh, blanketly, we cannot say in a blanket manner that madrasas are being used for such fundamentalism. There may be some exceptional cases that few madrasas may be being used, but I cannot, I am not, sir, aware of this. I, I do not think, sir, that they spread fundamentalism. Uh, you see uh, growth of xenophobia in Europe, the Roman foreigners, immigrants. What is the reason for that? Sir, Europe has been on this, uh, the European economy is slowing down. There are lack of jobs and employment for the local population. So there is some kind of uh, uh, unhappiness among the people that uh, people from outside are taking their jobs. So this is one of the factors, economic factors. Other is that there have been series of attacks in the European and they fear that refugee and immigration has led to such attacks on our soil and they are disturbing the peace of that area. These are the two major factors which have led to the genocidal <coughs> tendencies. Do you see uh, any relevance of non-alignment these days or in future for India? Sir, India's policy of non-alignment will be relevant for all times to come as far as I think because it gives us strategic autonomy and non-aligned movement per se, sir, may have uh, been subdued because the, there are no power blocks right now but in future there can again be a power block. For example, we are seeing now US-China emerging as two power blocks. So it can happen in the future and it will become relevant again. But non-alignment movement, uh, the countries that are there, there those countries have similar aspirations that India has and I think they can be used and harnessed for other purposes, for example in WTO uh, to further our own agenda or in the climate change sector or even for the UN Security Council that we want to enter. So we can use the non-alignment movement partners for such these purposes. Okay, thanks. Thank you sir. You can wait for a few minutes.